The river became a smelly mess. It was putrid. Desperation. The city was basically choking on its own waste. An unthinkable solution. Make the river flow in the opposite direction. That hadn't been done before. And the audacious engineering that literally turned the tide. This is Saved Chicago. It was the largest single public works project, non-federally funded, in the history of the United States. How they reversed the Chicago River. I'm Stuart Barney, and this is American Built. Hot dogs at Wrigley Field, deep dish pizza on State Street, the Lake Michigan breeze. That's what Chicago smells like today. But if it wasn't for some clever engineering a century ago, the Windy City would blow around a much different odor. In the early days of Chicago, especially during the fur trade, there are many stories about how unpleasant a place Chicago really was. It was flat, it was swampy in places, the mosquitoes were horrendous in the summer, the snow and cold was horrendous in the winter. Chicago was a swamp, but it had incredible potential. It stood at the juncture of two key water trade routes, one going east-west, one going north-south. If Chicago could find a way to connect them, it would become a trading hub. The market for your goods lie to the east of here. How are you going to get them there? And it wasn't by trains yet at that time. It was by canals. Canals were the main way that commerce could move and at a very competitive price. With the prospect of a canal connecting to the Illinois River, there was the opportunity for commerce. In 1848, private entrepreneurs built a canal from the Chicago River to the Illinois River. They called it the Illinois and Michigan Canal. Everything was lining up for Chicago to become um, a huge commercial center, which it did, and the um, population grew by leaps and bounds. The INM Canal solved the bottleneck. Goods could now float from New York all the way to the Gulf of Mexico. It was the connection between the eastern seaboard and the Gulf of Mexico that made Chicago happen. But the Chicago River became a victim of the city's success. The real problem that Chicago faced was the explosion of population. Any city that grows fast, there's a lot of stress on the infrastructure to keep up with the population. And one problem in Chicago was the water. There were periodic epidemics of cholera. The city was basically choking on its own waste. It could not contain the waste that this enormous population was generating. The desperate city turned to an audacious civil engineer named Ellis Chesborough. He was a self-taught engineer, learned his trade from the ground up, and he was brought to the city to develop a plan. He had never built a sewage system, so they sent him to Europe to see how sewage systems were built because there were sewage systems there. He came back with several ideas. Chesborough designed a system to take that waste down to the Chicago River, but his system depended on gravity. Well, that was going to be a problem in Chicago. The city was too flat. There was no way to get a grade to a sewer system so that it could drain properly. One of his ideas was to raise the city up so that the city streets, the water and drainage and everything that was coming was on the city streets would be flowing down by gravity. Chesborough's outrageous scheme was to lift the entire city building by building, then slope the sewer pipes toward the river. Gravity would take the waste down to the Chicago River. The river would dump it right into Lake Michigan. What could possibly go wrong? They used jack screws with multiple laborers, one at each jack, turning the screws in unison. The city itself raised the streets. But then individuals and businesses were obligated to bring their buildings, if they wanted to be up with the rest of the city, to raise them themselves. Some buildings had to be raised as much as 12 feet, and the problem was solved. Sort of. It did work, which was good news and bad news. 
It worked because it finally was able to drain the sewage, but unfortunately the sewage was then going into the Chicago River. Chesbra solved one problem only to create a much bigger one. Chesbro should have known that there were going to be problems because the drainage, the sewage was going to be right into the Chicago River and the Chicago River was going right out into Lake Michigan, which was a source of drinking water. The river became a smelly mess, terribly polluted. It was putrid. There's a section of the Chicago River that was known as Bubbly Creek because of the gases that were being generated by decaying animals. The city was drowning in its own waste. 